Hi and welcome to Chester Beatty, a museum in the middle of the city centre within the beautiful grounds of Dublin Castle. Chester Beatty is devoted to the promotion and understanding of world cultures with rare scripts, manuscripts and treasures from Europe, the Middle East, North Africa and Asia among its collections. Come with me in a journey into Chester Beatty as we meet Dr. Mary Redfern and discuss together the work of the magnificent Utamaru. Come on. And this is Dr. Mary Redfern, and she is the curator of the East Asian Connections here at Chester Beatty. And uh, we've asked her to pick out one of her favourite objects, and I'm already finding this really <laughs> beautiful. And Mary, tell us what you chose. Yes. So this is a printed book from Japan, and it was made in 1788. And it's a book that's full of these gorgeous pictures of insects but it's also full of poems about love. And in this way, it's sort of nice bridge between art and the human world and the natural world, but it's also really beautifully made. So the technology that goes into making it is sort of really fine craftsmanship at yeah. the highest level. Wow. And um, was this, um was this a we uh, an object mm -hmm. for wealthy people or it was it like a high-end object when it was yeah. made? Yeah, I mean, the print culture in Japan is really special because it's very much the popular culture. So it's not necessarily just the wealthiest people in society. Okay. But having said that, this book has some really special printing techniques and that would have made it at the higher end of the cost spectrum. So not the sort of upper, upper echelons, but you'd have needed to have a fairly deep pocket to buy something this lovely. Okay, so, so show us yeah. some of the lovely things. <laughs> so each um, sort of opening in the book has these sort of uh, illustration of insects going across two pages with these poems on the left hand side. Okay. And the sort of the idea behind the book is that in the middle of the eighth month, a group of 30 poets sat down and they had a banquet and they listened to the insects singing through the night. And as they listened to the insects, they wrote poems about love and romance. And that's what you can see on the left here. So we always get two poems and then two insects in the drawing. And the name of the book is Ehon Mushi Erami, which is just picture book of selected insects. And as you go through, you find that it's not just insects as we would sort of understand insects, but it's also spiders, frogs, all kinds of other things. Oh. So we shall start to have a look at some of these. And it's all just printed on paper. So Beautiful. it's really lovely though, the colours of the flowers and then the little insects. So this is a beautiful little centipede in Japanese. He's a mukade crawling up Got the stem it. here and a long-horned grasshopper beside and him. is are they written by the same person is the is the script written by the same person so the script will all be by the same person but the poems themselves are by the 30 different poets yeah. so this is the signature of each of the poets oh, here and then the title which is the title of the insect so for the long-horned grasshopper in japanese he's the umayo uma oi mushi and that means basically the horse driving grasshopper and the poem about him actually talks about the reins of my heart so it's sort of a pun on the grasshopper's name and playfully working it in there mm -hmm. um, but then the other thing is in the printing you can see that the outlines of the plants here are done in green mm -hmm. and this is sort of makes the outlines very soft compared to a lot of Japanese prints where we'd be used to a very sort of strong black outline okay. and it's sort of respecting and responding to much longer histories of painting and painting manuals that were actually produced in China but enjoyed in Japan as well. Okay. Um, and then here, so as I said it's compared to a lot of Japanese books this is a sort of very luxurious production and you can see that in this page here so first thing to notice is the background is not actually the same colour as the paper no, in this it's image. Like it's yeah, very yeah, soft yellow. yellow yeah. So that's sort of an extra bit of work that in a way didn't need to be done. It's mm -hmm. just pushing out everything to the best level. All the colour printing is incredibly fine. And the way these books are printed, so this is sort of one sheet of paper and this is a second sheet of paper. So the printer has to make sure he's getting the colours spot on on both otherwise the picture won't look right yeah. when you put the book together and bind it. But there's a third very special thing here, and that is um, visible just about in the <gasps> wings of the dragonfly and also on the butterfly. 
So as you move it around in the light, you can see that they sparkle. Oh, wow. And this is a sort of luxury effect used in some Japanese prints where they use ground up mica. And mica is a mineral which is sort of very sparkly, very glittery. And they grind that up and they actually sort of print with mica. And it just gives this sort of extra wow. little touch of luxury to it, but also captures the iridescence that yeah. we get with insects, you know, the beautiful dragonfly wings when you see them over a pond. Mm, lovely. So, this yeah, is nice. one of my favourite pictures in the book and this is one of the reasons I love it. This is actually um, an image of fireflies. Oh. And so the whole of the sort of picture area has been shaded out to give you that night scene. And then just climbing up the slender stems, you have this little firefly with his glowing Bottom, it's a little piece really? of red on yeah. it. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, well, that's gorgeous. And they're so sweet. And then the little moth as well, yeah. just there. This is another of my favourites. I have many favourites. And this is because of this gorgeous praying mantis we have here. And he is the most elegant creature I think I've ever seen in a book. He looks he like is, an alien or something. He, he looks is, like he's, he's consciousness. He's fabulous. <laughs> and when you see, like I've seen them in the wild in Japan, just running along the street. And they're fantastic creatures. Mm. It's like really, really like something you couldn't imagine seeing generally, but they're very beautiful. Um, and I actually have the poem about this one, and I would quite like to read it. Oh, please if that's okay. do. So the poem for the praying mantis says, Not knowing she may change her mind, overconfident praying mantis, you wait for her with head held high. Now, this is a nice poem about not approaching romantic affairs with too much arrogance, of too course. much pride. But if you think of the praying mantis with his head held high, if you know a little bit about praying mantises, you'll know that the female often decapitates and eats the male. So actually, as well as sort of being a nice poem about romance, it's actually very telling about the behaviour of the insect. So it's a very nice sort of pairing it's a nice of subject and theme. It's nice science and art. Exactly. No, and I just, yes, he just looks so terribly proud there does, as well. He does, doesn't he? And with the hands yeah, ready to go. Up. Ready to go. Beautiful. Beautiful. I can see why that's one of your favourite mm. pages. And is that one of your favourite poems as well? Um, yes, I think in this book it is. Yeah. It's... It's a good lesson for people. This is another of these luxury effects. So just like the sparkling mica, one of the other things that printmakers could do is it's called blind embossing or embossing. So they actually, when they're printing, would make a block that would just give them an actual slight three dimensional bit to the page. So again, if we lift it up in the light, you can see that those are oh, actually yeah. lifted from oh, the page. Gosh. So every little kernel of corn is sort of lifted out to give it that texture and it's little effects like that that are when beautifully done and also done very sort of with restraint yeah it's not everywhere in the book but where you catch it it just brings it. things to life that little bit more lovely lovely yeah. i think that's all for this volume yep but um. there is a second volume <laughs> And the second volume just continues and exactly again, the same way. Yeah. Here. So these are some of the museum marks. So um, when objects are brought into the collection, it's really important that they're given a collections number so that we can keep all the records we need to keep and also any notes we have on the research and any notes we have on treatments or any work is all kept together. So record keeping is a really important part of museum work. And we started, oh yes. And again, it's, it's well, yeah. it's been well thumbed, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. So you can see on each page, the sort of the lower half yeah, is it's more like it's worn with like someone's, that's the where they've turned it. There's another um, beautiful drawing. And yes, and this is a gorgeous one, and it's the colours here mm. that just really sort of sing out. So you've got this beautiful dianthus, a wild pink, and then again, oh, a the dragonfly. Oh who yes, more of the mica. More of the glittering, oh, so he just so catches lovely. on his wings. Oh, look at that. And this is a horned scarab looking up at a little bagwell up here. 
So again, one. so again, it's sort of insects that wouldn't always be things that you would find in the sort of traditional arts at the time. And that's Utamara sort of bringing his own observation, his own passion for nature really to it and the poets as well. But again, the delicate printing, like to think that this is all printed just with simple wood blocks, colour by colour, layer by layer, to achieve this result is really incredible. That's amazing. Yeah, he picked um, the simple insects, didn't he? The ones yeah. that we see every day. There's no yeah. glamour about them, but he's glamorised no. them, which is very nice. And you'd have, I mean, things like butterflies, fireflies, those would appear in paintings. Those would appear in art and poetry, but, a but not a bagworm. No, no, or a little scarab. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Ah, yeah. <gasps> the frog! It's a beautiful one. Yes. This is a gorgeous a little frog. And there's a few things here. This yep. here. It's just, are these and another here? little frog. So <gasps> you've got oh, yeah, yeah, you've got your main frog here. Yeah. And then this is a little gold beetle. He's called. So it would have been probably a, like a leaf hopper. Um, but then you have another frog hiding under the lotus leaf, and of course we can see his reflection. Oh so wow! We get to see every every little detail of nature. And that's what's really lovely. And even the sort of the lotus stem, it has this sort of hairy texture to it. So it's everything has been really closely looked at, really closely observed and brought together with these poems, sort of. And it's just the whole book is really a sort of heartfelt appreciation of the natural world yeah, and the joy of just being in it and looking at it and thinking about it and responding to it. Yeah. It's lovely, really, really lovely. Mary, thank you so much for showing us such beautiful objects. They're absolutely stunning. I would never, ever get the chance to see something like that or understand it to the level that you've explained. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you very much for coming in.